Hello and welcome to this screencast in which we are going to talk about how to calculate the risk of a single asset and for that we are going to assume two scenarios number one when we know all probabilities as equal so all probabilities in this case are known and equal and we have been presented with some data here from 2004 to 2008 the data is about the return that a particular asset or a stock is earning over this time period 19% in 2004 1% here 10% here 26% here and 4% here what we need to do as the first step is to find out the average return and write it down in column number two so we write down the average return and we call it the e k or uh, you could also write it as simply k bar so how to find out the average return when all probabilities are known and equal we know that already we simply find out the arithmetic average of these numbers so what we are going to do to find out the arithmetic average we are going to add all these numbers up and divide by the divide the sum by the number of time periods so let us add them up 19 plus 1 20 plus 1 uh, plus thir uh, 10 30 plus 26 56 and plus 4 gives you 60 so the sum total of all these numbers here is 60 and this 60 then needs to be divided by the number of time periods 1 2 3 4 and 5 so 60 divided by 5 gives you 12 so let us write here 12 percent and then copy all in all the cells of this column we will have 12 percent the next step is to take the difference in column number three of the values in column number one and column number two so 19 minus 12 is going to give us seven percent let's write that here then next one one minus 12 is going to give us minus 11 next one 10 minus 12 is going to give us minus 2 next one 26 minus 12 is going to give us 14 and then the last one 4 minus 12 is minus 8 the next step is in column number 4 we take the square of the values in column number 3 so 7 squared is 49 percent minus 11 squared is 121 minus 2 square is 4 14 squared is 196 and minus 8 squared is 64 what we need to do now is to add up the values in the last column and write the result here so if you take the sum total of all the values in column number 4 you are going to get this number 434 now finding out the standard deviation from here is simple you pick up this 434 and write it here under the root 434 and in the denominator of this fraction you write n minus 1 how much is n 1 2 3 4 and 5 so n minus 1 becomes 4 so simply 434 over 4 square root and that is going to give you 10.42 percent and that is your standard deviation or the risk of this particular asset if you want to write the same result in notational terms so that it serves you as a formula you will realize that in the numerator of this fraction you wrote this number 434 which is a sum total of all this calculations so what we have written here is summation of the difference between the actual return and the expected return squared and in the denominator we have written n minus 1 that is number of time periods minus 1 so then that was pretty simple the second possibility is when we are presented with a scenario where probabilities of events are not equal if they're not equal let us look at this data there are three possible events that we have assumed possibility of a boom possibility of a recession and then something in between these two extremes in normal scenario and in this column here we write down the probabilities of these events 30 percent chance of a boom 50 percent chance of a normal time and 20 percent chance of a recession and then we write down the returns associated with these outcomes so if there is a boom there is uh, going to be a return of 15 percent on this particular asset 
during normal times the return would be 10 percent and during recession the return would be two percent so the first thing that we need to do is to find out the expected return ek or if you like to call it k bar so be it so how do we do that we multiply this probability by this number plus this probability by this number this probability by this number and write down the result so I'm just going to write down the result for you here 9.9 percent expected return now to find out the standard deviation what we need to do is we start a square bracket and the first term inside the bracket is going to be let us begin with the probability the first probability is 30 percent or 0.3 so let's write here 0.3 and then multiply this 0.3 by the difference between the actual return during this uh, event that is 15 percent and expected return that is 9.9 percent so let's write here 15 minus 9.9 .9, and then raise this thing to the power of 2 then plus we now go on to the second event which is normal the probability of that is 50 percent so we write here 0 0.5 and multiply this 0 0.5 by the difference between the actual return 10 percent and the expected return 9.9 percent and then later square it up so 10 minus 9.9 .9, and then we square it up like this then put a plus sign again to incorporate the third possibility that is of a recession the probability of which is 20 percent or 0.2 let us write here 0 0.2 and then multiply by the difference between the actual return during recession that is 2 percent and the expected return 9.9 percent so let's write here 2 minus 9.9 .9, and then square it up and close the square bracket and because we want to take the square root of this entire thing if you leave it just like this your answer will be in terms of variance and in order to find out the standard deviation what you need to do with this whole thing is to take the square root one of the ways of writing square root since I don't have uh, a square root symbol that long here and I'm not using an equation editor so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write an alternative way of indicating that we are going to take a square root of this huge term so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this entire term to the power of half raising this to the power of half indicates to me that I'm taking the square root so if we complete this calculation our result is going to be 4.5 percent and that is going to be the risk for this asset if you want to write this entire procedure in notational terms I will leave it to you to write that so that is what I have it here you figure it out and do some homework so that you arrive at a formula which you can use when all probabilities given to us are not equal thank you very much ladies and gentlemen bye bye